Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem. We're back again, uh, mostly because we were having a look at this add-on. So I'm back in my test world. Uh, when we go to our manage modules, we were looking at item piles in the previous video, and we were focusing on the merchant slash shop um, abilities for it. But there's a couple of other things we can do with that, so it's worth having a look. Uh, right, so let's um, grab one of our random items and chuck our ration over here. So we did this before and we can create a new pile, double click it and it will open this up for us and we can configure this pile. It's a bit annoying that they overlap each other. Uh, so what we did before, we went to other settings and we chose merchant because that's what we were uh, we were looking at uh, and it looks really really good um, but there is that issue with it not updating the page when we're clicking on some of those options it's not flagging it um, it's not to do with restarting foundry um, although that did fix it it's just yeah there's something a bit twitchy there but don't want to look at that we've got two other things we can look at uh, i'm hovering over container at the moment and i want to look at vault as well now just before we do that this here what we've already got just that make you sick sorry <laughs> uh, this is just a standard default item pile and it's just a pile of items um, that you can use you know uh, let's open sorry mum where are you sorry mum let's take uh, let's take his uh, let's take his dagger we can chuck that where did it go that's not what I wanted where did his dagger go I was expecting it to allow me to chuck his shield straight into here. Oh, so let me chuck it. Oh, that, did <laughs> that didn't work how I expected it to. Uh, is it because I've got this open? Because uh, uh, when I did this before, it worked just fine. Uh, you're running out of weapons. Y yeah. Uh, if we open the sheet here, it's adding them in to the sheet, which is what I expected. I, I, was, I was, let's close it and open it again. There they are. Right, okay. It just didn't refresh the window. Uh, and that's possibly tied in with the issue we saw with the merchant slash shop. In fact, it was, we were clicking things. It wasn't updating the window as we go. Now, I do expect that to be a current glitch rather than an ongoing problem. Um, but you can see we can just chuck items here and they're literally going to sit there effectively in this pile. Uh, yes, because I used rations. Currently the pile is called rations. Um, and of course it's got the ration icon. But I can change any of those. So if I close those, I can right click like we do with any actor icon. I can change the name of it. Pile O Stuff. So I can do that. That's easy peasy. Uh, and I can change its appearance and just choose a different, uh, there we go, let's choose this one. Um, we can change the uh, the icon there and it's now called pile of stuff. So that just literally is a pile of stuff sitting there on the floor. If we open Sorryman up again, we should be able to, he hopes, uh, drag this stuff back and give it back to Sorryman. Now it's adding it back to Sorryman, which is good. It's not taking it off of here. If I update item pile, hasn't done it. If I close it and open it again, ah, okay. So that's something to bear in mind. We're dumping stuff in the item pile, but it's not removing them. So is that a configuration setting that I have omitted to do? Because that seems a bit silly, doesn't it? So let's look at these other settings. Item pile, display, single item image, yeah. Uh, use item names, yeah. Override single, uh, single item token scale, Okay, so it, yeah, we're going to scale it properly. Sharing settings is about being able to share items amongst people. Uh, there's nothing in there about whether we remove stuff from the pile. Um, whether this should act as an item pile, yes. Um, interaction distance, well, we talked about that before. That's how close you need to be to the pile to be able to re react with it. Now, that's interesting. That's set as one. Whereas Sorryman is over here, and the pile is over there. But that still let me drag stuff. Okay, just bear that in mind. Um, enable us to inspect the items. That means just being able to click on Dagger and it brings up that for us, which is good. Uh, split items by type. I like that 
myself, especially for big item piles, and it just means it's going to put weapons together, consumables together, armor together, etc. We still have that ability to use a macro in here. Uh, delete when empty, so if we remove everything from here, it should delete it. But at the moment, it's duplicating items rather than removing them. Uh, can we stack items? Yes, we can. Edit description, override currencies, override secondary currencies, override item filters. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. So at the moment, it's a pile of stuff. It's also a duplication machine. Okay, right, so that seems to be, again, uh, a little issue with that. Well, I'm sure, once again, it will get fixed. So let's put our shop one up here. Let's put our pile of stuff uh, over here, out the way. Because we didn't want to specifically look at pile of stuff. So let's create yet another one. And it does make me wonder, is it me that's being the idiot here? Whoops. Um, so let's try this a different way, in case it's the way that I'm just creating a new one by pulling the item. Let's drag this item pile over here. I'm going to double right click. Uh, we can call it whatever we want. So I'm going to call this one a chest. Okay, so I'm just naming the icon here uh, and I can choose appearance. I'm not going to do that right at the moment. Double left click. I can open this up. We've just got an empty pile. Configure the pile. Durr. Uh, go to other settings and here I want to create a container. Now when I do this I get these extra options down here for these different images and I can state whether this is closed, whether it's locked, uh, etc. So I can say oh yeah it's a closed, this container is going to be closed and I can choose an image for when it's closed, an image for when it's open and an image for when it's empty. Also a different image for if it's locked and three different sounds. Closing the chest, opening the chest, and if the chest is locked. So let's pick up some of these different things. It's why I didn't want to go to the icon and change the image there. Now, I haven't got three images of a chest open, closed, and empty. Um, so let's just illustrate the point rather than anything else. I don't want to use consumables. Let's look at containers. Um, and let's just go with, uh, not barrels. Why am I on barrels? Let's go to chests. Okay, let's choose these reinforced, um, these reinforced ones. So let's start with, I want chest. Okay, so chest, reinforced elm steel tan. Let's use that one. Okay, and for this one we're going to use steel brown. I know this doesn't make sense. <laughs> we're checking it works. I know it doesn't. It doesn't actually make sense. Okay, and we update the item pile. Ta da We've got a picture of a chest now, and it's called chest. <laughs> okay, if we right-click on here, let's close that for a second. If we right-click on here, we've got some extra icons. Extra icons that enable us to lock it. Changed our image because it's now locked. It's now unlocked. We can open it. We can close it. And you can see that this is, and that's that's take us back to configure. So you can see it will change those images depending on whether that is locked, open, closed, etc. Uh, yeah, don't use the images I've used. Use proper images, but I haven't got any. I just want to show that that works. So that's really nice, isn't it? I like that. Uh, and of course, it might not be a chest. It could be anything. It could be a wardrobe. It could be a backpack. It could be, I don't know. Um, the necromancer could be using a zombie. You know, zombies open, zombies closed. <laughs> Just store your stuff inside a zombie. I don't know. Do whatever you like. <laughs> Probably don't listen to my advice. Um, okay, so that's that's the settings we've got for there. Now, again, sharing settings here. Um, this is about... So if this is a chest, say the party are using this to keep all their stuff in, enable sharing items. So when this is enabled, players can only take their share of the quantities of items. So if there's 20 arrows and there's two players in theory they could only take 10 each because they can only take their share but that doesn't normally work does it because you normally end up with one magical long sword in there or one set of leather armor um, so that's probably not something we want to use sharing currencies so if we're using this like a loot chest and the characters just chuck all of their loot into a thing then they can only take their portion of the loot so previously we looked at using the encounters um, 
we, we created the encounter group where we could dump all of our loot and then split that loot evenly between everybody. We can do that using this. So the players can choose to deposit stuff into this chest and then we can distribute from the chest, in this case, evenly for currencies, um, but items we're saying that they can take pretty much whatever they like. Enable a take all button, that only works if we've got currencies disabled. So that means that Sorryman can wander in and go, I'll have everything please and just empty the whole chest regardless of who put stuff in there. It depends how you want to use this item. If that's Sorryman's chest, then yeah, I would want him to have access to be able to put in anything and take anything he wants. Uh, and I'd probably want to restrict other players from having access to it. That's what the locked bit is. If it's locked, they can't necessarily access it. Um, split only with active players. And that's an interesting option, isn't it? If you've got six players and only four of them turn up to a session that, where you're splitting the loot, you might say, we're only going to split the loot between players who are actually turned up for this session. That's your decision. Um, it, it depends how you run your games. And I've certainly run games where you do that with things like XP. You only get XP for the sessions you're actually attending. So if you miss a session, you miss XP. Um, maybe that's not fair. Um, maybe that's punishing players for having a life outside of TNT. <laughs> How dare they? Um, but I've also done it the other way where it's like, well, yeah, you missed one, but you still get even split. Even though you weren't there, your character in theory was. Um, it's up to you, however you want to do that. Now, on the main settings here, these are very similar. So enabled whether this should act as an item pile, that inter interaction distance again. Um, when we did the shop, we left it as infinite. We've got it as one on here, but that doesn't seem to be preventing anybody. Uh, can we see the item names? Yes, we can. Split items by item type. Um, I like to do that. Um, macro, when we interact on it. So again, we've already got built-in sounds and stuff for this, but you might have a different macro that you want to play. Uh, an animation, rather than just changing the image or something. You can do that. Do we want to delete this when empty? no because we want them to be able to put stuff in again later it's a, it's a physical chest in this case so the chest is always going to exist unless they actually sell it stack items we can edit the description um, so we might put you know if I can type the party <laughs> the party loot box okay there we go so we know what that one is we can absolutely do that and close that. We've got that in there now. Um, and there's some of these override things that we don't need to worry about. Okay, so we've got this chest. Brilliant. It's currently empty. But because of the way we've got it set up, look, we've got some options here now. It's currently empty. So we can put stuff in it. Uh, we can also add currency to it. We can also split the currency, because we said about splitting the currency, now this is saying one ways, because the only active player character I've got on here is Sorryman. So it's only going to split it between Sorryman and Sorryman. <laughs> but we can close the lid. Oh. Close the lid. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's supposed to close the lid. It's not working. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, not to worry about that. There are there are little glitches. They're quite frustrating, and I think it's more than likely all to do with the update of the 3.0 game engine and just some of these mods not having chance to get all the little bugs and things out yet. Um, so you know, don't don't be disheartened. The fact that there's some glitches. Um, yeah, is that annoying? Yeah, it really, really is. But I suspect that they will be solved. Um, and certainly some of these things that we've currently got glitches on, I will be implementing in my game once we know they're working. All right, so sorry, man, stash some of your old stuff. We should be able to dump that in here. Now, remember, this is not updating properly, even though we're chucking mm -hmm. stuff in. Let's just keep chucking. Uh, I'm going to chuck his shield in, uh, and uh, I'm going to chuck his one ration in there. Okay, and in theory, close lid. So when I open this again... We've got one lot of rations, one shield, dagger, hand axe. So you can see it's broken it down into those sections because that's what we said we wanted to do. So we can right click, of course, and we can toggle it closed. We can lock it. We can unlock it. We can open it again. Um, so it's got closed lid there. 
Ooh, did you see that? So if I open this, so we've got this and they've got this picture here because it's open lid. If I click close lid, it changes the animation. So it is effectively closing that lid for us, which is quite nice. Uh, what it doesn't do, if Sorryman wanders up to this and says, oh, I want to open it, it doesn't then change the open animation. Now that might be because I'm logged in as the DM and if the player was doing it, that might actually work. Um, I think we'll flip over to the player in a little bit and try this chesty muck chest um, and see if that works. But there we go. We've got Sorryman stuff in it. Let's add some currency in here. Oh, it's going to give me grief, isn't it? Because um, it doesn't want to give me the, the window. Oh, it has. It's behind it. That's annoying the way the, one, the, the different windows are nesting. So if I move that over there and go add currency, here it is. So let's add in 50 gold. Okay, again, I might need to close that and open it again for it to show me their 50 gold. That, up, not updating these forms is really annoying, but it's working. It's just not updating the forms as we go. Okay, let's open Sorryman, where have I put you? Let's move you back over there so I can find you easier. Okay, we've got this sheet. There's 50 gold in here. Sorryman has 474 gold at the moment. If I split this, it's only going to split the gold, not the items, because that's what we said. I've done that. Sorryman now has 524. This has not updated. Let's close it, open it again. The gold has gone. So it is splitting that as we expected it to do, but it's only splitting it between one person. So that's really good. So you can dump all of the loot that they find, like all of the loot that they find, into this one, I don't know, it might be a bag of holding. And they just chuck everything in there and they worry about it when they get back to town. Get back to town, they can open up the bag of holding. Here is everything you found in that dungeon. How are you going to split it? And they go, oh, we're going to split the coins easily, evenly. Well, you can just click that and it will split it automatically straight away for them. Um, they haven't got to argue about it. Often they'll go, oh, well, I'll take only 100 gold if I can have the shield plus one. It's like, oh, okay, well, you do that. And then you split the rest of the gold. So you could, um, you know, or manually reduce it and then split it between the remaining people. You can do that. Um, so this is pretty good. I like this. Part of the fact it's not updating the sheet. I like the chest. We've called it chest. The bag of holding, the the cellar, whatever it is. You can use this for all sorts of things. Characters have got houses or rooms in the inn and things. You can just have them, oh, we've dumped everything in the inn. Yeah, as opposed to going a chest but it's got a ten foot pole in it and all of that malarkey. Um it's like, nope, it's all in the it's all in the inn room. And the inn burns down and you delete the chest for them. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> They're getting a bit too cocky. <laughs> just burn everything they own. <laughs> Um, okay, let's close that. I was giving away my secrets. I mean, I, I would never do that to players. No, no, no. Okay, let's create another one. Let's drag this one out. Uh, oh, that's, yeah, so this is, we've got the chest image again. That's fine. Let's double left click on this. Ah, uh, uh, yes, let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's create a duplicate. Oh, gosh, which one's which now? Yes, this one. Okay, so let's create our fourth one then. So I'm going to double click this and go to configure our pile. Mm -hmm. Just because it wants to be annoying. It's going to put them over top of each other. And go to our other settings. And this one, we're going to look at Vault. So this could be, again, it's, it's, it's very similar to the container, but it's a, just a different way of doing it. Um, and there was a comment made about the Vault uh, being a bit like the WoW inventory. So WoW World of Warcraft inventory stuff. Um, and I wasn't too sure what they meant by that because I'm not a WoW player. And then as soon as I saw it, I went, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Um, and it's very similar in quite a few games. So what we can do is we can create um, a area that we can drop, drop, drop stuff into. And yeah, you do see it a lot in computer games where you have like a gridded area that you can drop things in. It makes it, instead of having it as uh, rows and stuff. So we can do, let's, we'll leave it as default 10 by 5. Uh, we're not going to have expanded items, um, but it looks like you can, obviously you can put set these as whatever you like, but you can also apparently have expanded items. You can add something that expands it. I'm not sure how I would use that, but that's okay. We can restrict vault access. So by default, everyone can access vaults 
if they can see them in the sidebar or can get to them on the scene. When the setting is enabled, the vault will only be viewable by either the owner of the vault character or user's character setup. So we can restrict access. So Soriman could have his own uh, vault pile. So it might be in his room or in his house or in his bag of holding or whatever. Um, and nobody else can access that. Uh, with our chest, we've kind of got that, that any of the players can kind of go and have a look in it. Um, but this we can lock it, lock to a particular player if we want to a bit easier. Uh, manage access. So in here is where you can say, for example, if I go to plus, uh, mm, does it not want to do it? Does it not want to do it? Let's update that first. Ooh, ah, right. <laughs> Jumped ahead now, haven't I? Uh, because I did that configure, I've changed it to a vault. This is what I mean. Look, you've got these um, 10 by 5, because that's what we set it as. This grid kind of thing. We'll look at that in a moment. I just want to go back to this configure pile. Um, and under these main settings, is it under other settings, manage access down here. Uh, we should be able to do this. Okay because it's not updating this screen that's really really frustrating but we should be able to add player characters onto here to say whether they can withdraw or deposit or none or both and same with currencies whether we're allowed to put money in so what you could do is say all players are allowed to put stuff in here but only one player is allowed to take out or, or something like that um, however you want to do it you know like a laundry chute they put the stuff in and it, off it disappears and they can't get back to it might be a good way to do tithes and things. Okay, so that's a shame we can't see that particularly well. Uh, we can also do this log vault access. I'm going to turn that on, and you'll see what that mean, means in a moment. Uh, and this logging format, uh, I'm going to do character name only, and you'll see what that does uh, shortly. Uh, let's get rid of that. So any of these main settings we want on the front, we've looked at these before. Uh, split items by item type, I don't think any of this. Do I want to delete it when it's empty? No, I don't. But of course, certain things you might say, yes, you do. I don't for this. Uh, can they stack? Yes, they can stack unless the description says otherwise. Um, again, I can edit a description and put something in here. Sorry, man's private stash or, so, or whatever it might be. I don't know. It might be a hole under the floorboards where he's keeping this stuff. Right. So this is the grid. Okay. Get rid of the settings. I didn't save them. I just closed them. Hopefully that hasn't messed anything. Let me just check. <laughs> God's sake, what's wrong with me? Um, no, don't delete when empty. That's definitely something I wanted to change. Uh, did I save settings when I went to log vault access character name only good I did right so this is the vault close this when we come to the item pile here we open it up this is what we get the vault so if we open Soriman over here Soriman can now dump his stuff into the vault now again it's not updating this page for us if I open the sheet, you can see that this stuff is indeed appearing in there. It's just not updating this. Open it again. There's his stuff. Uh, and you can move this. I'm not sure why I can't move why I can't move the stuff in here. Um, oh, because it is moving it. It's just not updating it, isn't it? I can look at the stuff. I can't move it. Did I accidentally? I can sort items. Hmm. I can, oh, see, this is frustrating. This is really frustrating, this not updating thing. Have I accidentally locked this to say people can't do stuff in there? Restrict access, no. Um, manage access, is it because I, oh, did I do something on this by accident? No, it wouldn't kind of let me do it. Oh, it's because it's putting all the windows behind everything. That's really really annoying especially for somebody like me who's quite simple <laughs> okay let's add some coinage in there oh look it's not updated it if I click sort no it's not updated it I need to close it and open it again now it's got the coinage in there so that not updating it's driving me potty uh, it's also sorted the items this time 
um, by coming out and coming back in. Okay, so you get, hopefully you can see the idea of this, even though it's really frustrating, it's not working. Can we dump Soriman stuff back into Soriman? We can, that's what we want. Now we haven't got it updated, so let's close it, open it again, there we go, good. Right, his stuff's now gone. So it's just not updating these windows for whatever reason. Um, I don't think there was anything in the module settings, we'll check those in a moment. But if we look at this log, <laughs> which, which won't let us do because it won't refresh the page. Why, why, why won't you refresh the page? Please refresh the page. It's not doing it. Just doesn't want to do it. Okay, but what that log is supposed to do is it's supposed to, uh, and weirdly enough, when I did it before, it did work. Um, I'd, I'd had a very, very quick play with this before the video. I know, I know, I actually looked at something before starting making a video on it. Uh, and it just gives a log of what came in, what came out, and which character did it. Right, I'm going to um, see if we can return to setup, come back in and see if that will help with this. I'm in my testing world, because I really want this to work. I really want you to be able to see what it's supposed to be doing. So back into item pile. We've got nothing in there, we know that, that's fine. Let's go to logs. <sighs> now it's going to do it, at least temporarily. So we can see this log, I know it's very small writing, sorry about that. Sorryman the Wide withdrew a quarter staff. Sorryman the Wide withdrew clothes costume, and before that he deposited those clothes, deposited quarter staff, and it gives you how long ago. So one minute ago he took the quarter staff out, two minutes ago he put the quarter staff in. So it gives a log, so you can see who's actually done that. And if you look in the chat here, um, you can see that this has actually been doing stuff while we've been playing with item piles. Um, uh, and uh, so we've got our notification from when we did our shop trade in the previous video, but also where we've added gold uh, and split gold between people. So when we split that gold between one person, Soriman, it's actually put this note in here, which is quite nice. So we are logging some of this information, which is good. Now this seems to be behaving itself right at the moment, which is great. Um, let's see if we can get this to show us the manage access thing while it's behaving itself. Click on the plus. Good, we can see it now. Okay, so we can actually select that character to say, can they see it? Can they organize it? Can they withdraw? Can they deposit? With, can they withdraw currencies and deposit currencies? So this is what I was trying to show you, but because it's not refreshing these things very well, that's a bit of a nightmare. So we can leave Soriman on there saying, yes, you can do all of that, which is great. While this is working again at the moment, for now, can we dump his spell book in there? Yes, we can. It's updated it. Can I take his spell book back out? Yes, I can. <gasps> Heavens above. Right now it's actually working as it's supposed to, which is good. Uh, what about this gold, though? How can we... Can we can we take gold out? What's the best way to do that? Um, so this is, man as a GM, you can update the currencies on this pile. So I can manually do that money into the vault. It doesn't look like there's an easy way to drag that money out and give it to a person. Um, not that I can see right here. But let's do proper, uh, proper little test. Okay, so... I'm going to, in my other page, though you can't see, because it's a secret, <laughs> I'm logging in to our game world over here. Let's log in as player one. Make that a bit bigger for you. And we're now in our Sorryman the Wide. All right. So we've got our shop, our pile of stuff, our chest, and our item pile. Can we look at that pile of stuff? <gasps> I'm too far away. Can I look at the chest? I'm too far away. Can I look at the item pile? I'm too far away. Can I look at the shop? I can look at the shop, <laughs> although it's closed. I can look at the shop because we set the shop to be infinitely, um, in infinite distance, didn't we? Okay, let's move a bit. One day, I remember to unpause the game when I switch over to our player. All right. Sorry, man. Get over here. That's it. So let's look at our pile of stuff, sorry, ma'am. Can we access this? Yes, we can, because we're close enough now, which is great. Let's open your character sheet over here. Uh, see if we can make that slightly more compact for you. So these are the things 
in this pile. Can Sorryman pick up an extra quarter staff? Uh, uh, right, uh, uh, take button. Take the quarter staff. So in the message thing here, we've got default item pile. Something went to Sorryman. It says it was a quarter staff. Great. Sorryman now has two quarter staffs. That works. Lovely. Here's that split currency thing. It's only going to split it one uh, one way. We didn't put any currency in here, but Sorryman can click that button and take his portion of the money, which is great. Brilliant. I can leave and close that. All right, Sorryman, next. Let's go to the chest. So this is the container bag of holding. It's not just a pile of stuff on the floor. It's that chest. Um, he can close the lid. Woo, close the lid. Um, if you double click it, Oops, <laughs> it's open the lid. Did you see that? We couldn't see it because uh, if I close the lid, it closes and changes the animation. So that's the picture. If I double click on it, it's changed the picture to show the lid is open because somebody's accessing it. So that means the other players can see when somebody is rummaging in the chest and stealing all their goodies. Okay, sorry man, there's a couple of other things in here in the chest. Would you like to take back your dagger? Perfect. Would you like to take back your hand axe? Perfect. Would you like to take back your shield? Perfect. That's working exactly how we wanted. We're not getting the issues of this not updating when we're logged in as the player at the moment. Um, and our game log here is updating to say, oh, that's nice. It's compacted that final card where he took the dagger and the hand axe and the shield. It's compacted that into one thing. So that's quite nice. But it's keeping this log of who's doing what. Right, you're done with that, Sorryman. Well done. Let's close the lid for us. Lovely, I like that. That's really nice. Let's go to this item pile. This is the vault. So this is what it looks like. So viewing as Sorryman the wide. So Sorryman's having a butcher's in here. Can he stick his dagger in the vault? Yes, he can. Um, okay. You can just uh, click on that and it takes you to character. That's good. Uh, so you can chuck his spell book in here. Uh, he can chuck his shield in here and all of those things. He can then wander off, do something else, come back later. There's all of his goodies. And he should be able to just... Oh, he can't take them. Why can't he take his own stuff back? Uh, there's. I suspect it's because of a setting where I've said, no, they can't do it. So let's just check that. <laughs> I've stolen all your stuff, what a git. Uh, able item inspect, split items by type, don't need to do that. Um, other settings. The, the restrict vault access, no. Player character access, manage that. Sorryman should be able to do all of those things on there. So maybe that's all I needed to do. Okay, so Sorryman should be able to sort those items. Uh, sorry, Moon, can you come back over here, please? Here we go. Now, open that again. Can Sorry, Moon, now... Now he can take his stuff. Okay. So, it didn't default to saying he can access it. I have to add him on as somebody who has access to it. So, bear that in mind. You can't just go, oh, I won't put permissions on so everybody can access it. It's like, no, the default is nobody can access it. You need to give permissions. Um... And while we're in a Sorryman, this is one thing he can now, because he's got permissions, he can sort items. So he can chuck his hand back in there and sort them. Uh, there is a search bar in there. Can Sorryman can also see the log. So he can see which of his colleagues have been stealing all of his stuff. That's good. Uh, and money, 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 money. Can I withdraw money, please? Um, so up to 12 gold. I've got a slider or I can type in he's going to take 9. So he's on 524. He's now on 533. That is working. Okay, this that's really good. So we now have, let's uh, let's recap. Let's uh, get rid of Sorryman. Let's recap back on this screen. We have four essential functions that we can do with this one add-on. We can do the merchant screen, which looks brilliant, except we've got some issues with it not updating um, the, the screen for us, which is frustrating. Random pile of stuff just chucked on the ground. That works fine. Again, we have some issues with it not updating the page very well. 
We have chests and containers that we can open, close, chuck stuff in, split currency, give access to different players. Love these lovely little animations of open, close and things, which is a nice little touch if that's what you want. And lastly, we have this style. Now, there's not an awful lot of difference between the, the container, the chest container, and this version and the pile of stuff. They're all pretty much the same idea. It's just how you want it to look. You know, if I open the chest, I'm going to have this list of things down here that can be broken up into their individual items. If I use the vault one, I get this kind of grid with all its little images. So whichever one you want to use, really. What's your preference? Um, it would be kind of nice if you could have open the chest and you get the grid view. But you still get the open closed chest things, wouldn't it? A combination of those two would be quite nice. Um, but yeah, take your pick, whichever you like. Um, but it's a really good. So this is this is uh, item piles. Really good little module. Uh, nice little add-on. Enables us to do those things. I really do like this functionality. I'm glad somebody. I can't remember who it was. Whoever it was who pointed out in the in the comments when we were looking at shops and went, "Oh yeah, this one exists." Um, that got me looking at item piles. I'm really glad you did. Thank you for that because yeah, it's it's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, I know that I will be creating when they are when I go back to Fandelva. Um, I will be creating a storage for all of their crap stuff, <laughs> loot, whatever, um, in the inn. So they're not carrying everything around with them all the time. They're going to leave it stashed in the inn uh, and it may or may not get stolen at some point. Uh, I think it depends whether the red brands are still active in the town. Wow. Whew. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, are you going to use any of these four options? Let me know what you're using them for. If you've got suggestions of how these could be implemented in different ways. Uh, and if you happen to know some really good little images for the open closed chest and stuff like that. Um, that you think it would be worth sharing. Let us know. Brilliant. Take care. See ya.